I always take the opportunity at a gathering of senior advocates uh, to just um, add a little uh, discomfiture to my dear friend Paul Lusoro, senior advocate of Nigeria, who, as you know, is from Akwa Ebom State. I always remind him that my village, uh, Ikene, which is uh, a very little village in Remo in Ogu State, has 13 senior advocates now, a few more than his state. Uh, quite. And I always, uh, and I always uh, advise that whenever they need any help, you know, even just to beef up the numbers, we are always prepared in Ikene to offer something to my dear friend, Paul Lusoro, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Your Excellencies, my lords, after listening to the evergreen and always on point, Chief Mrs. Folake Sholanke, SAN, and who will believe that she is 90 years old this year? I think, I think she really, if, if we can look like this at 90, we should really thank the Almighty God. God bless you, ma'am. And earlier, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, represented by my Lord Justice Kekere. And then listening to the very engaging and thought-provoking lecture by His Excellency General Abdusalam Abubakar. I doubt if colleagues have any more appetite for any heavy uh, discourse, especially uh, as uh, dinner appears to be slightly delayed. Let me add my voice anyway to the congratulations to the newly preferred senior advocates for the attainment of this prestigious rank. I particularly wish to congratulate and commend Professor Chief Ajagbe Toriola Oyewo, whose resilience and persistent determination in the pursuit of excellence had him donning the silk at the age of 91. The, this nonagenarian story of hard work and perseverance is one that will be told for generations to come. And this is as it should be. The incredible power of hope and the unfailing laws of sowing and reaping have been so decisively proved yet again. Congratulations, sir. The visioners of Bosan had indicated from the beginning that we did not intend to be a typical elite club in the legal profession who will not go beyond simply enjoying and relishing the privileges of our profession. Our role clearly must go beyond that. And it's imperative that we lead the way in deepening the discourse on and championing reforms that will continually uplift the prominence and prestige of our profession. Some of the reputational damage suffered in recent times by our profession and our system of justice could possibly have been avoided with rigorous and sustained introspection on our part. Apart from the roles of the bar in the development of an effective and efficient justice se sector, was so eloquently outlined by the guest speaker. There are two areas which I wish to commend to us for further reflection. The first area has to do with the law school, the Nigerian law school, and what its future should be. Every year, thousands of students enroll for the bar examinations at the law school. Most of them have to live in poor accommodation spaces, the classrooms are full and will only become more so in the years to come. There is no country with the number of law graduates that we yearly graduate that provides or still provides in-person lectures and accommodation for those taking bar exams. Generally speaking, 
professional exams do not provide residential training. This is why I think the suggestion by some that we scrap residential training and enable law graduates to register online for bar examinations and be provided online resources for training, mock trials, appearances in court, etc., and how to make applications and all of the various things that we teach. All of them can now be done without being physically present in a classroom. We can do all of this and ensure that those who want to take the bar examinations in Nigeria can do so from practically anywhere in the world. And the, the attachment is probably the only other thing that they may, they, may, they may need to do. And it's important that we do not allow a situation where the crisis that we're experiencing today, where there are far too many young men and women in, our cl in the classrooms, and accommodation, of course, continues to be a problem, to subsist for much longer. Still on the issue of legal education, how can BOSAN help in stemming the falling standards in the quality of legal education, which ultimately translates into dramatic decline in the standard of legal practice? While the Nigerian Bar Association is conscientiously advocating and supporting continuous legal education for legal practitioners, the problems we see in our courtrooms today, unfortunately, are those that emanate from inadequate or defective legal training. In some instances, from the basic levels of instruction. We, in our various ways, have developed schemes through which we can offer community service, be it in the form of pro bono legal service to indigent litigants or undertaking projects for the benefits of communities. But when it comes to legal education, I believe that BOSAN is in a position to offer something that may be a little better. The partnership of BOSAN with the Council for Legal Education and some of the faculties of law, perhaps on a pilot basis, for the provision of additional instructional support will not only be useful to the students, but also to some of the law teachers who obviously would require mentorship. I recall how my Lord Honorable Justice Amina Ogi, JSC, while serving on the bench of the Sokoto State Judiciary, graciously accepted pro bono to serve as an associate lecturer at the Usman Damfodio University in Sokoto. Imagine the students' excitement and enthusiasm, and most importantly, the expertise and experience that instructions by members of our body in our case will bring to the classrooms. Only a few of our undergraduate students benefit from the tutelage of those of us who are traditionally within academia. The second issue has to do with the role of our body, the body of senior advocates, and the Bar Association in ensuring the discipline of our own members. This is a, there is a growing perception that some of our colleagues have developed unhealthy relationships which are meant to influence cases before our courts. And it is, it is now becoming the case that even younger members of our profession do much the same things, and many of them do much the same things. I think it's time to commit to calling out those whose actions demean the rank of senior advocate and ensure that they are brought before the appropriate disciplinary bodies. We must not allow a situation where the rank is demeaned because people, because members of the public believe that some of, of those in our rank are those who actually corrupt our system, corrupt the judicial system. As I close, I also, want you to, I also want to leave you with one thought. Our system of justice is a public resource. It does not belong to the legal profession. It does not belong to the bar or to the bench. It belongs to the people. We, we lawyers and judges, are paid operators of a service that our constitution created to resolve their disputes 
and to give justice. We are custodians, not owners. When this public resource is not working effectively on account of delays, or it is being discredited by corruption, we, the operators, have a moral, legal, and civic obligation to fix it. We must not become defensive or thin-skinned. If we do not fix it, we would have failed in our most important task. We would have failed the people. And to borrow from the scripture in Proverbs 31, verse 8, that Chief Mr. Sholanke essay and quoted, we would have failed to speak up for the voiceless and the vulnerable. Every one of us seated here today, those of us in our profession, know that there is a lot wrong with our system of justice today. History beckons us to fix it. I congratulate the leadership of our body, the Body of Senior Advocates of Nigeria, for sustaining this initiative and for instituting a scholarship scheme, which rewards excellence for students in our law faculty. And I wish all of our new members, members of the Body of Senior Advocates, a prosperous and happy practice in the inner bar. Thank you very much. God bless you all.